This is my workplace, the Silver Scrim Effects Lab, and my current project uh, involves making 10 steeplechase face masks for my friend Brandon at Coney Island, and I have to have them in the mail tomorrow so that he can have them by Friday. Obviously these aren't quite finished yet. Uh, I still have to do some details on the eyes and the mouth. So 24 hours later, the masks are finished. Uh, this is what they, the, the final versions look like, and they are ready to be shipped to Coney Island, these four and the other I six. I love Coney Island. And uh, actually, the Silver Scream Spook Show was started on... Uh, we, we started doing the performances right there at the Coney Island Museum. So it's got a very special place in my heart. I love Coney. And I, I'm pretty proud that Kevin got to... Um, be involved with this project and be the first guy to sculpt the official Coney Island steeplechase mascot guy, whatever his name is. Does I was surprised a... they didn't have one already. Yeah, actually, we both were. So, what does he have? A, a funny name or a? He has two names basically: the face of the steeplechase, uh, because that was the face that you walked under as you went yeah. into the steeplechase, which which has not existed for. Uh, Many years. I think the steeplechase shut down in about 1966. Uh, but uh, he's also known as what? To be replaced with Shoot the Hobo. There you go. Uh, he's also known as the Funny Face. Yeah, the Funny Face. That's, yeah. that's it. In so, fact, yeah. I think more people know him as the Funny Face than New the steeplechase. New York icon coming at you. Do you have any uh, interesting memories of all your times at Coney Island? Oh, yeah. Like, um... Like, there is so much, like, history at Coney Island. Just taking the train to Coney Island is fun and driving up and seeing and coming up to it and seeing that stuff. But, like, I got to do the Mermaid Parade one year, and um, it's a, it's a crazy, it's like the biggest parade I've ever seen. And it was crazy because Madeline and I were up there tub thumping this movie project, and um, the movie was called The Box. I'm not familiar too much with the movie, but... Um, we're there doing, like, um, body painting and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, there's so many interesting people at this place. And this friend of mine is, like, Heather Buckley. She's in the horror community up there. She's, like, I saw her and I was, like, oh, Heather, come here. I want to show you something. She's, like, no, no, no. And Joe Coleman. I just missed out on meeting Joe Coleman, one of my favorite artists. And he's yeah, always around too. up there. So, but, yeah, yeah. Um, too, too many cool things to talk about Coney Island, the Coney Island Museum. It's a small room, but we've probably done, fuck, I don't know, um, two dozen performances in there as the Silver Scream Spook Show, and now the Phantom Creep Theater is continuing mm. along with it. But it's such a it's such a great room to be in because you think about all the history of what has gone on in that place, and it's just great that they allow us to still put on shows and... It's always a real pleasure to go back to Coney Island and perform. I, I remember one little piece of trivia, something you said to me a long time ago. Uh, we go through a lot of paper towels here uh, at the effects lab. Every now and then when I tank up my truck, I grab as many of those free paper towel things out by the, by the gas tanks as I can, and I bring them here. I use that because it's free paper towels. I was doing that one day, and, he, and uh, you said something like, you're just like those old tattoo guys out at Coney Island. Yeah. Explain I, that. I read this book about the old tattoo guys on Coney, and it was crazy. It was full of, like, knife fights and all this crazy <laughs> stuff. And it was they were just such cheap bastards back then that they would go up to the Nathan's Hot Dog stand and take all the napkins off so they could do the tattoos with the uh, napkins that they would get for free. Piece you know. of Coney Island history. I got a funny Coney story. So, uh, one of the first times we did the Phantom Creep Theater up there, we had, um, no. One of the first time, one of the, the early times we were doing the Silver Scream Spook Show up there, we actually thought it would be a great idea to get people in ghost costumes to picket the museum with these signs that said, Coney Island is unfair to ghosts and the Spook Show's uh, unfair to ghosts. And I'll just say this, never put anybody in a white sheet 
in New York City protesting anything. It looked really bad, and the and every there was almost violence, you know. <laughs> so keep the white sheets away, you know. People didn't even see what we were doing; they just saw people in white sheets and was like ready to fight. A so, good thing to remember, not yeah. just in New York, but in any city. Yeah. Uh, why don't we show some of the cool stuff here? We're in the sideshow section of the Silver Scream Effects Lab. I figured it would be appropriate for the Coney Island tie-in. And uh, why don't you just go around and show a little bit of the cool stuff we've got. So yeah, here. Here, I'll take it and do some, yeah. some stuff here. So this is a Fiji mermaid that um, I made about, I don't know, 15 years ago. And jackalopes. you got to have jackalopes and shrunken heads. And some of this stuff is like, uh, you know, real uh, pieces of um, spook. Uh, spook show and sideshow history, you know, like we've got some of these gaffs here, like three headed vultures and whatnot. And then let's see, over here we have if you're strong willed enough, you can look behind here and see the thing. What is I mean, the I thing? I would say Lon Chaney invented the job that we that we do, special effects, but Honestly, it kind of goes back further than that because I see what we do as sort of a, an extension of all of this stuff. Because uh, in, in a uh, in a way, the old sideshow gaff makers were really special effects artists too, which is uh, you know I, I think one of the reasons Shane and I both continue to make these things. Uh, oh old yeah, time sideshow gaffs. Yeah, and we still do it the same way that they. They did it, you know, with with Sculpey clay and things like that, you know, and like real teeth from, you know, animal skulls and things like that incorporated in. So, in fact, I would say even the best technique for making a fake mummy is still the old time way it was done in sideshows, where you take a plastic skeleton and take some cotton and some latex and you do what's called carpsing on it, where you dip the cotton in the latex and you sort of uh, get rid of the excess and you sort of sculpt uh, s uh, this sort Some of musculature onto it and whatnot. Yeah, nothing looks better in my okay. opinion.